My goodness, the beauty that is traveling. Gorgeous beaches in Mexico oh with white sand with water so clear that you can see your little toes wiggling through the water. Awesome rivers and trails around Yosemite where discovery and scenic routes are around every corner. Amazing reasonable prices on food that make you wonder just what the fuck is California doing. Fuck you! And it's not just the food that's set at a good price out there. Pretty much everything out there is a pretty damn good deal. I got these Oakley sunglasses in Cancun for 200 pesos. Here in the US, this would have been a multi-hundred dollar expense, but out in Cancun, 200 pesos. Oh my to my fellow USD brethren, that's about $10. And that was with me giving a little extra tip to my young hustler out there. Mario, I'm talking to you. Oh now are these sunglasses legitimate? Absolutely not. Am I gonna tell anybody that? Absolutely not. I call these my foreman sunglasses. Clink clink to all my union boys out there. Just a little over two weeks ago, I went camping and traveled out of the country for the very first time in my life. And that statement goes for both of those things. So you can see how the month of June was very exciting for me. And this was a very awesome and inspiring experience where much was learned about my roots, being in nature, and I'm really gonna enjoy talking about it. However, all this stuff that we just touched on you are going to hear about none of that. Take all this that we just talked about and launch that shit over there because the thing that we're gonna focus on today are these fucking things. These things are known as airports. Specifically, I'll be talking about SFO, which is San Francisco International Airport. Also known as the third layer of hell because that is what it feels like when you're there. Now, if your flight is supposed to leave at 10.45 p.m. like mine is, or was, get into that later. Many say that you have to show up two hours, heck, even three hours earlier than your departure time. So you could have some leniency and have some time maneuvering through the mazes that are terminals. I don't know if you could tell yet, but I fucking hate airports. The fear and hatred I have of planes is a completely different story. And that phobia is caused to movies like Final Destination, Flight Club, and the United States government. Thanks for the paranoia, fellas. Now you're living. Tumbling down. Uh, we want to bring in Mark Walsh, who's a, a, a freelancer for Fox. I was watching with my roommate. It was uh, approximately several minutes after the first plane had hit. I saw this plane come out of nowhere and just ream right into the side of the Twin Tower, exploding through the other side. And then I witnessed both towers collapse, one first and then the second, mostly due to structural failure because the fire was just too intense. I hadn't even left the country yet, and I had already spent $50 on a double Whopper with fries and a drink. It was an amazing Whopper, but for that price, it better fucking be. Burger King was exceptional. And a BLT. Did I need a BLT? No, but my flight got delayed four separate times. <laughs> You can imagine what that does to a man's hunger. Me angry equals me hungry. Simple man math right here. Upon being dropped off and going through security, I had to take off my shoes, my belt, I had to put all my luggage and backpack onto this plastic box and put it through this x-ray. Once we got past security, we maneuvered through the terminals like a maze. I, I left that up to the wife to handle. Hit that shit. Hit that shit. This is. This is. And around this time, it was about 8.30, 8.40 p.m., so we had about two hours to kill. Hence the double whopper and BLT mixing around in my stomach right now. Gina even got me a Vietnamese coffee that was $12. It was good. It did its job. Kept me up all night. And all night, I was kept up indeed. Small little detail you may have missed on my tickets, but that date says July 18th. 2024. On July 19th, just an hour and 15 minutes later, quite possibly the biggest technological hiccup in the form of an update happened, and the most serious blue screen of death problem occurred worldwide, and many flights were rescheduled, rebooked, or just flat out cancelled. Now what luck of the draw did I get? Let me tell you. First, it is 10.45 p.m. There is no plane at our gate that has arrived. I immediately sense panic and dread around the whole group around us as they were heading to Cancun along with us. Then we all get a notification on our phone that our flight has been delayed from a 10.45 p.m. departure time to an 11.45 p.m. departure time. 60 minutes, hour wait, 
No biggie. Mm. Shit, I already slammed this coffee down my throat along with two days worth of carbs. I might as well stay awake one more hour. It is now 11.30 p.m. Yeah. The plane arrived at the gate and it's docking. Or however the term for when a plane parks. Do planes even park? A plane came to our gate, people got off, we were all excited. We all thought, oh shit, well, we're getting on this plane. 11.45 p.m. departure time, right? Wrong. 11.45 p.m. rolls around and we get another notification that lets us know that our flight has been delayed from a 11.45 p.m. departure time to now a 12.45 a.m. departure time. We are now at July 19th, 2024. Again, big oopsie. This was also known as the crowd strike incident that affected many vacations and people worldwide. This flight was supposed to be here at 11.40. I feel like once you're involved in something that's mainstream known as an incident, you've gotten into some shit. I kill time, I watch some Elden Ring videos. I did record my whole playthrough of the DLC, so maybe that comes your way, maybe that doesn't. Fuck you, Radon. We're getting close to our departure time, and at this rate, I just wanna get on the fucking plane and get this over with. I have a genuine fear of boarding a plane because of all the things I previously mentioned before. But at this rate, I didn't care. I just wanted to get on the plane and fly. If I died, I died. I at least got to say I boarded the damn thing. We're now at 12.30 a.m. It is looking rough. Five minutes later, we get a notification that our 12.45 a.m. departure time has now been rescheduled to 1.45 a.m. I wish I was kidding. 1.30 a.m. rolls around. I have no more Whopper to eat, no more BLT, the Vietnamese coffee is wearing off. When am I getting on this plane? 1.45 a.m., we got another delay. I, I fucking wish I was kidding and exaggerating this story. We now got notified that our departure time changed from 1.45 a.m. to 2.45 a.m. Let me just add that we got there at around 8.30 to 8.40 a.m. It is now damn near 2 a.m. and I am on no plane whatsoever. That is about a six hour wait to not board anything. So far I was having an airport simulator experience, but with the worst part of the airport and no finish line in sight. This did not change my opinion on airplanes or airports whatsoever. If anything, it solidified that these things are ass. But hey, you know what? The new departure time was 2.45 a.m. It was already 1.45 a.m. One hour wait, we'll do it. I'm already here. I just have to sit here and I'll be on my plane in the next 60 minutes, so be it. 2.45 a.m. rolls around. The plane is docked or parked or stopped or what, I'll put the terminology up here. And we get a notification that our flight had been canceled. <laughs> I shit you not. A six and a half hour wait. Th th that's damn near the time we were gonna spend on this fucking flight. And no luck. We got to board no plane. We did not get to go to Cancun. Those hotel reservations we made that were non-refundable. Fuck those, I guess. They, they, they're they worthless now. All the reservations for the stuff we had tour-wise. Fuck those too, I guess, non-refundable. So you can imagine this micro panic attack we had as all these vacation plans just came to a crumble because an update was released and now there's a bunch of blue screens of death everywhere all over this airport. So once we were notified that our flight was canceled, a bunch of United Airlines reps were walking around talking to gates with flights that had just been canceled. And you can imagine the hell those guys had to suffer through. Even I had to ask them a couple questions because I, I was completely lost. This is my first time traveling out of the country. This is Tina's first time dealing with a technological hiccup that involves a cancellation of a flight. So we're all just kind of deer in the headlights here. And they came out and they let us know that they thought it was a cyber attack and that there's nothing that they can do right now. We can't rebook flights. We can't even give you your luggage if you check those in. And no joke. The next words that came out of his mouth were, this problem may take up to 24 hours to resolve. I told Tina, let's just get the fuck out of here. It's now currently 3 a.m. 3 a.m. No flight got canceled. I got lucky enough to call my brother and he was awake. He came and picked us up from the airport and we got to go on home. Didn't get home till damn near 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> this is a game code. This is a terrible first time experience. Home sweet home, I guess.
But honestly, all things considered, I think we got the good ending in this. We got to go home. There were many people who were on the same flight as us that were not from San Francisco. So they did not get the luxury of getting to go home after their flight was canceled. Can you imagine what that feels like? Your vacation's over. You're all packed up. You're excited to go home and finally rest on your bed. You go to the airport. Your flight gets delayed again and again and again <laughs> and then all of a sudden you get told you can't go home you can't rebook your flight right now and you can't even get the luggage that you just checked in I i'm very glad i did not have to deal with that i can't imagine the dread that someone has to go through now that they have to do a 24-hour airport challenge involuntarily the very next day was calling people rebooking things and having to fight expedia on these non-refundable charges definitely saved our asses we got to rebook everything, of course at a later date, unfortunately, but I mean, fuck, there was a whole lot of shit going. I still don't even know what went on that day. It seems like vacations all over the world were affected. Very excited to talk about our travels, both in and out of the country. Uh, the one time I decided to lead the country, God hurls a mini cyber attack at me, so I mean, maybe it's best I don't get on planes. This is the very first time an experience I had gets a zero out of 10. Traveling, awesome. Thank you for watching. God bless you. God bless America. Foreman glasses. Foreman. <laughs>